It's Miss Becky and Miss Shelley. We are happy to be here with you once again today. We want to remind you that today is Mother's Day, so don't forget, you need to be extra special to your mom today. Yeah, so you guys, I want you to go to your moms today, and I want you to tell your mom how much you love her and how much you appreciate her, and maybe you could do something special for her today. Yes, I have a good idea. If you go to your mom and ask her what chores you can do around the house as a gift to her, that would make her so happy. Mm. All right, but we have a series in church right now for the kids that's called, I Know It Sounds Crazy, but it's true. And every single lesson has a crazy Bible story that's hard to believe. But we know it's true because it's found in the Bible, which is God's word, and all of it is true. All right, so before we get into that, I have a question for you. Have you ever been asked to do something that made no sense at all? Or has somebody told you something that you couldn't believe or didn't make any sense to you? Yeah, like maybe your mom or dad asked you to do something or told you something and you just thought this makes no sense. Or maybe a teacher or anybody who's in your life and you're just thinking to yourself, why am I doing this? Or why did they say that? Yes, and I can remember when my kids were your age, they were asking me if they could have a cell phone. And I told them, no, you don't need a cell phone. And you know what they would say to me? All my friends have one, Mom. I need one, too. And then I would say something to them, like, if all your friends jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff, too? And you know, when I said that, that made no sense to them whatsoever. They didn't like that. All right, so we're going to have a story today about a man in the Bible, and God asked him to do some really crazy things. All right, but before we tell you who he is and tell you his story, let's watch this video. It'll help you understand our lesson better. Welcome back, everyone, to another exciting edition of I Know It Sounds Crazy, But It's True. My name's Josh, and like always, if it's weird, if it's wacky, if it's bizarre, and it's in the Bible, we're gonna talk about it. I'm ready to go. What about you guys? Let's kick the tires and light the fires. I am overjoyed. It's party time. I haven't been paying attention, but <laughs> whatever. Let's just get this over with. Now in today's lesson, we're talking about a judge. Order in the court. I'll have a cheeseburger. No, not that kind of judge. We're talking about the book of judges, you know, in the Bible. That makes more sense. Now you may have heard of some of these judges before, like Samson, you know, the big strong guy that hated haircuts. I hope you brought your sewing kit cause I'm ripped. Something like that. The judges were men and women that God picked to lead the Israelites during tough times. Every judge was really brave. Ah, look at me so brave. Except for one, Gideon. Gideon was a huge scaredy cat. What was that? Can I have it? No, he wasn't a cat person. Well, that's boring. But he was afraid. In fact, when we first meet Gideon, he's hiding. But an angel of the Lord shows up and says to him, Greetings, mighty warrior. To which Gideon replied, This guy, a mighty warrior, seriously? If he's a mighty warrior, I'm a giant rooster. That can be arranged. Quiet, you. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. The Israelites were under control of an evil empire called the Midianites. And God chose Gideon, the scaredy cat, to lead the Israelites against them. That don't make no sense. And it didn't make sense to Gideon either. So Gideon asked the angel for a sign to prove that he was really from God. <laughs> like this one. Hello, I am from God. <laughs> now it's a bit weirder than that. First, the angel made fire come out of a rock. Fire is my favorite. Fire from a rock is pretty cool, but it wasn't enough for Gideon the scaredy cat. So we got a fleece, you know, sheep's wool. <laughs> laid it on the ground and told the angel that if the next day the ground was dry but the sheep's wool was wet, then he would believe. Well, the next morning, it happened. And hallelujah, Gideon finally believed. 
Uh, no. Oh, come on! Get with the program, you yellow belly! Calm down. The next day, Gideon asked for the opposite to happen. He wanted the ground to be wet and the police to be dry. And the next morning... <laughs> It was! This is the weirdest, most random story I've ever heard. I like it! <laughs> as weird as it was, it was finally enough proof for Gideon. So the angel told Gideon to gather up an army and go to battle against the Midianites. Battle! But what do you think happens next? Is Gideon gonna chicken out? <laughs> Will he stop being scared? <laughs> Will he trust God even though it doesn't make sense? Find out today in your lesson. You know what time it is. <laughs> oh no you don't. Last time you turned me into a dinosaur. I won't this time. Do you promise? Why certainly. Why do I suddenly want corn? That's messed up. Well Gideon sure didn't seem like much of a warrior, did he? And you know what was with all of those tests with the fleece? That's just crazy. You know, in Judges chapter 6, verses 36 and 37, it says, Then Gideon said to the Lord, If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel, as you promised, prove it to me in this way. He says, I am going to leave this sheep fleece on the floor tonight, and if I wake up in the morning and the floor is dry and the fleece is wet, then I know you are going to help me rescue Israel as promised. And you know what? That is exactly what happened. Gideon woke up the next morning and the floor was dry and the fleece was so wet that when he wrung it out and squeezed it out, he got a whole bucket full of water. Isn't that amazing? Well, you know what though? Gideon, he decided that that wasn't enough. He wanted to do it one more time. So he says in verse 39, he says, Please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. This time, let the fleece remain dry while on the ground, and let the ground be wet. And that is exactly what happened. Gideon woke up the next morning, and the fleece was dry, and the ground was wet. You know, it's clear to me that Gideon, he didn't actually trust what God was calling him to do. And it makes me think, would you trust what God is calling you to do if he was calling you to do the same thing that he's asking Gideon to do? We'll have to see. You know, this isn't the craziest story about Gideon in the Bible. There's another one, and we're going to learn that in our Bible story today. But first, I want to check in with Disco Dave and find out what you got to know, and then we're going to worship the Lord together. Ha, ha, ha. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about obeying God even when it don't make sense. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I don't get it, that's okay, I'm gonna obey anyway. Sometimes God asks us to do some far out stuff. It just don't make sense. But we gotta obey God anyway. Disco Dave, I need you to trust me. For sure, God. I'll trust you no matter what. And that's what you should do too. Trust and obey God even when it don't make sense. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, I don't get it. That's okay. I'm gonna obey anyway. That right there is what you gotta know. I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino my
but we're inside and I can't see it. No need to yell, civilian. We're all right here next to you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Major Lee Skeptical. Wait, did you say we? That's okay, and yes, I said we. I have my company here with me today, and we are on our way to complete an extremely important mission. Important mission, huh? With your company? That's correct, civilian. We have a huge task at hand. Some say our orders don't make sense, but I have learned to obey anyway. Hey, today we're learning that the Bible says we should obey God even if it doesn't make sense. Where do you think I learned that from, civilian? The yellow pages? Well, Major Lee Skeptical, I'm surprised that you aren't having doubts about this mission. I mean, you usually do, right? Well, I must admit that occasionally I do have my doubts. However, as I have grown in my study of God's word, I have learned to obey God even when it doesn't make sense. That's awesome, Major. So what is this important mission anyway? One moment. At ease, company. Civilian, are you sure you want to know the mission? Because once you know, you can't unknow. I think I want to know, yes. I'd like to know what your mission is, Major. Go ahead, shoot. Get down, civilian. Get down, get down. You're in the line of fire, get down. Uh, uh Major, what are you talking about? There is no line of fire. Well, if there was a line of fire, I doubt you would still be alive, just standing there the way you are. Besides, I clearly heard someone say, shoot. Well, yeah, that was me. I meant, go ahead and tell me about your mission. Oh, well, of course. I knew that. Well, our mission involves this company defeating an enemy. Are you sure you want to know? I do. I want to know what your mission is all about. Can you explain a little bit more in detail? Well, it involves my grandmother. She has a vicious enemy, and the enemy needs to be defeated. What is her vicious enemy? A group of aphids. Those are bugs. Mm. Are destroying my grandmother's prize-winning roses. I am leading these ladybugs to said aphids because they are the natural predators of the aphids and the aphids do not stand a chance. Okay, okay. So you are leading an army of ladybugs to destroy aphids because the aphids are destroying some flowers. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. You got it, civilian. And we'd better be on our way before all the roses are destroyed. Good day, all. Attention, uh, about face, left, 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 right, left. Well, you guys, I hope that Major Lee Skeptical accomplishes his mission. You know, today we're going to hear a Bible story about Gideon and the mission that God called him to do. Let's go and check that out right now. Hi, kids. Today's crazy Bible story takes place in the book of Judges, chapters 6 and 7. And it's about a man named Gideon. Gideon was a farmer. Our story begins with him hiding because he is scared of the Midianites, the enemies of the Israelites, God's chosen people. They would come and invade the Israelites' farms, including Gideon's, and steal all their crops and food. Gideon hid in a wine press because he was afraid. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Mighty warrior? That doesn't make any sense at all. Gideon was not a mighty warrior. He was a scaredy cat hiding in a wine press. The angel told Gideon that God wanted him to lead the army of Israel into battle to defeat the Midianites. Gideon argued for a while, but finally decided to go ahead and answer God's call to lead his people into victory, even though it made no sense at all. 
Gideon put out a call for all of the fighting men of Israel to meet him so he could put together an army to defeat the Midianites. He looked out at this army of 32,000 men and thought, maybe we can do this. But then God told Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. Too many men? How can you have too many men for a battle? That made no sense. Gideon told all the men who were scared to go home, and 22,000 of them left. Now he only had 10,000 men to fight against the Midianite army. As if things couldn't get worse, God told him there were still too many men. God then told Gideon to let the men go down to the water and get a drink. He told him that the men who drank the water by scooping it with their hands could remain in the army. What? Does that make sense? Choosing an army based on how the soldiers drank water? But Gideon obeyed. Then it really got crazy. God told Gideon to take the 300 men who were left and give them each a jar, a torch, and a trumpet. He instructed Gideon to have his army surround the camp of the Midianites, hold up their jars and candles, and blow the trumpets. What a crazy battle plan. But Gideon obeyed. Gideon and the men reached the edge of the camp blew their trumpets, and broke the jars that were in their hands. The Minionites woke up from their sleep and were so confused by the lights surrounding their camp that they started fighting each other. They ended up defeating themselves, and Gideon's men didn't even have to fight. They won the victory with candles, jars, and trumpets. Gideon obeyed even when it didn't make sense. In today's lesson, you guys are going to learn that when God asks you to do something, even if it doesn't make sense, that you must obey. Do a little sweet and salt. A little sweet. Oh, hey boys and girls, it's me, Terry, Terry Yaki, and I was just cooking up something tasty for my restaurant, Nice Rice. It's a five-star fine dining establishment that's famous for, you guessed it, my rice. Hard to mess that up. Now today, I'm also cooking up a very special power verse. The trouble is, I'm famous for getting things mixed up. Eggs aren't the only thing I scramble. I mix up the ingredients, the names of our dishes, and even the power verse. So I'm going to need your help unscrambling the whole thing today. So let's look at it together. If 1415 love me, obey my John. Commandments you. Um, yes, this is wrong. Very mixed up. Kind of like the time I made an apple pie with an apple iPad. Customers complained it was too crunchy. I don't know, kind of weird. Anyway, boys and girls, I'm gonna need your help getting this one unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Hmm, if 1415 love me, what in the world are these numbers for? Oh, of course, we'll move them over for now. If blank love me, obey my John. Well, that can only mean one of two things. We're supposed to obey a talking toilet or the book of the Bible is out of place. Which do you think? Yep, I think we should move John over too. Let's try it again. If blank love me, obey my blank, commandments you, aha! I think I found our two blanks. Let's put them in the right place. Commandments probably goes here. And you probably goes over here. So what do you think the scripture reference is? Yep, John 14, 15. Yes, 
That's it. I think we have it. Now stand with me and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. If you love me, obey my commandments. John 14, 15. That's a great power verse. Now, let's make sure we really know it so when we need to remember it later, it's not all mixed up in our brains. Stand up and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. If you love me, obey my commandments. John 14, 15. Great job, boys and girls. Now, I've got to get back to making my spaghetti. Now, where did I put my pudding? Hmm. Well, until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, ladles up. Chef Teriyaki is right. The Bible does say, if you love me, obey my commandments. Well, in today's Bible story, Gideon was asked to do some crazy things. Nothing that he was asked to do by God made any sense to him. But he loved God, and he obeyed him anyway, and it brought a great victory to his people. And you know what? It can be the same for us. Sometimes God may ask you to do something that doesn't make any sense. But if we are obedient to God, things will go well for us. God will bring victory to us as well. But I think there are some lessons that we could learn from Gideon. So, first of all, when you are asked to do something that, that makes no sense, but you know God wants to use it, you might ask a question. For example, you might say, God, are you sure you can use me? Remember when God told Gideon to lead his army? He actually argued with God. He said, God, I am from the weakest of all the families, and I am the weakest member of my own family. Are you sure you want me to do this job? I am not a warrior. He questioned God. He really just wasn't sure. So when we do that, when we question God because we don't think that we're the right pick, we don't think we're the best one for this job, what does God say back to us? God says, I will be with you. That's right. Gideon didn't have to defeat the enemy army on his own, and he didn't have to do it in his own strength. God was with him. And God is the one who defeated the army. God was with him the entire time. And it's the same for us. When God asks us to do something, whether it makes sense or not, he will always be with us. And we don't have to win the war in our own strength. God is the one who's going to win the war. All right, so what else can we learn from the story about Gideon? Well, I think sometimes when we have a battle or a fight in life, we don't look at how big God is. I think sometimes we look at how big the enemy is or how big the problem is. Gideon was looking at a huge enemy army and it made him afraid. So sometimes what we might say to God when we are looking at the enemy, instead of looking at how big God is, we might say to God, God, the enemy is too big. But what does God say back to us? I am bigger. God is bigger. Gideon didn't need an army of 32,000 men. He didn't even need an army of 10,000 men. He ended up with an army of just 300 men, but I don't think he even needed those 300. God was big enough to defeat the army all by himself. He does not need the help of men. So we need to not focus on how big our enemy is, but focus on how big God is. He's bigger than any enemy we will ever face. And I think there's one more thing that we could learn from Gideon's story. Sometimes when God asks us to do something that doesn't make sense, we might talk to God and say, God, this doesn't make sense. Well, it didn't make sense when God talked to Gideon. Does it make any sense in our, in our human mind to try and fight an enemy army with jars? and with horns, and with torches? Well, it really doesn't make sense when you think about it. How can you fight off an army with nothing but torches and jars? And was he gonna take his horn and sing the enemy to death? 
by playing him a tune on his horn. It didn't make any sense. But you have to remember that when we think, we think about things with our tiny human minds. Right? God is much bigger than us. He thinks much greater than us. When we have a thought, it doesn't have to agree with God's thought. God's ways are higher than, I, than ours. All right, he is the God who created the universe. He was around before the earth was created. So if it doesn't make sense, and what we say to God is, God, this doesn't make sense, what does God say back to us? I am God. That's right. He is the all-powerful God who created the world. He doesn't have to work in the way we think he should have to work. He's God. So when God tells you to do something that doesn't make sense, we need to do what Gideon did and say, I don't get it. That's okay. I'm going to obey anyway. And that's our lesson for today. So kids, let's close in prayer. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the story of Gideon in the Bible. Lord, we can learn so much from him. And Lord, we want you to use us. And we want you to be with us when you're going to use us to ac accomplish a great pur purpose. And Lord, we know that you are bigger than our fears. We know you are bigger than the bully at school. We know you are bigger than sickness. The enemy may be big, but you are bigger. Lord, I pray that you help us to never forget that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. What an awesome, crazy story that was. Who would have thought that you could have taken that story and learned so much stuff? You know, we are so happy to be here with you guys today. We miss you guys so much. We're going to worship the Lord together, and we will see you back again. Darkness. 